We do not promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. This video has been created strictly for harm reduction purposes. Basically, not everyone who has smoked DMT has actually been consuming pure or even just NN dimethyltryptamine. There is an unknown quantity of DMT currently in the market that has been contaminated, so to speak, with a substance called NMT. Uh, don't worry, NMT isn't dangerous by any means. It's just another psychoactive alkaloid that's present all throughout nature, just the same way as DMT is. And this is actually something that I personally have had quite a bit of experience with in the past. This NMT DMT mix has given me some of the most intensely frightening, but also some of the most profound experiences on any psychedelic that I've ever had. People's anecdotal reports that you might read online are kind of all over the place, and often they really do contradict each other. Some people claim that there's less entity contact on the blend, other people claim that there's more entity contact. Some people claim that the blend is shorter lasting and less intense, whereas others say it's longer lasting and more intense. People also often state that there are far less open-eyed visuals with the NMT blend. A lot of people say that that buzzing carrier wave sound isn't as present, it's replaced with more of a blissful silence type of experience. Another common one is people claim that the NMT mix has more of a warm body high. People actually state that the body high is quite euphoric. Anyway, why don't I just share with you guys my own subjective experience with this mix? Because I doubt that there's a lot of people who have actually tried it who actually know what percentage they were taking. First of all, I no longer explore any of these substances. The last time I was exploring DMT or NMT or any of this stuff was really when I lived abroad. That being said, I have not only knowingly consumed an NMT blend on many occasions, I've also knowingly consumed DMT that was so pure it formed these solid quartz looking clear crystals. And I've noticed a pretty definitive difference between the two substances. But even so, again, what I'm going to explain are my own subjective effects, as well as telling you guys about some of my friends' effects. Your own experience may vary. For one, the NMT mixture feels way more intense. And it's not just me saying this. A lot of my old friends who also tried this said the exact same thing. A common word that we all used to call it was pushy. The blend really takes over. It kind of comes on without warning really fast, and it can be very jarring. It doesn't really give you much time to get acquainted with how it feels. Comparatively, I found pure DMT to come on a lot smoother. It didn't feel as pushy and it kind of gave me more time to relax into the experience. That's not to say that pure NNDMT is gentle by any means, but you know it's really saying something when I'm telling you guys that the NMT blend was even more jarring and more intense. Also, I did find the NMT blend to be more potent. I believe it required a lot less to reach a breakthrough. I want to say that it was probably anywhere from 10 to 15 percent more potent by weight. As for the visuals, this is where I largely agree with what I've read other people say. I did notice a lot less open-eyed visuals with the NMT, particularly in lower doses or before a breakthrough. I also did notice that entity contact, you know, meeting uh, what people say, jesters or aliens, I found that happened a lot more frequently on the NMT blend. At times it almost felt like I was guaranteed to meet some kind of a creepy thing. I can also agree with this warm body high feeling, especially in low doses. When trying doses of 10 to 20 milligrams, myself and others found that the warmth that would just kind of encapsulate your whole body, like a warm rushing wave head to toe, was beyond euphoric. It was one of the most euphoric experiences that I've ever felt. And this was definitely more present in the NMT blend than with just pure NNDMT, which also does have a warmth. I don't want to say it doesn't. I'm just talking about the frequency of this warmth happening and also the intensity of the warmth. Same with the buzzing sound. I also can agree with the carrier wave not being present. It was just this blissful silence. Like we don't realize that even in a completely silent room, our ears are picking up all kinds of noises. There's even just that kind of staticky noise that we're always hearing that we've learned to just block out. On these psychedelics, that static is even gone. Hell, even the voice talking in the back of your head gets all silent. Unfortunately, a lot of the differences that I have mentioned 
really can just be up to set and setting. I felt like each of these, either the NMT mix or just pure NNDMT, was very capable of producing, I wanna say similar effects at different times. So I wanna be really careful with what I say are the main differences here. If I were to say the most prominent differences that I believe have nothing to do with set and setting, it would simply be the intensity of the onset. The NMT mix really was over the top intense, the way it would just suck you into it and just feel like it couldn't wait to rip you out of your body. It resulted in a lot of bad trips that I believe wouldn't have happened had I just consumed pure NNDMT. So there's that and definitely the silence and warm body high. Now, if you were to ask me which one I liked better, I'd probably have a really difficult time honestly answering that question. I mean, I've had some of my most profound trips on the NMT blend, but I've also had some of my biggest nightmares First of all, the very fact that there are any differences in the experience besides the NMT mix just being, well, less potent than pure NNDMT kind of contradicts what we currently know, or at least what's currently written in the literature. For example, the famous chemist Alexander Shelgin wrote in his book, Tikal, to my knowledge, there have been no reports of oral activity of NMT. I have had one report that the smoking of 50 to 100 milligrams gave visuals that lasted for maybe 15 seconds. In my experience, as well as the experience of other people that I've read and other people that I know, it would appear that the NMT when mixed with DMT creates a type of synergistic effect. I can largely compare this to the LSA that's present in Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds. When Albert Hoffman synthesized LSA on his own and consumed it, he noticed very little in regards to psychedelic effects. In fact, if I remember correctly, I believe it just made him really tired. In contrast, when people do consume Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds, which it is thought that LSA is the compound responsible for the effects because it's the most present alkaloid in them, people do have some very psychedelic effects. Similar to DMT with a little bit of NMT added, Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds contain a variety of other ergoline alkaloids. But what it seems, whoops, kick the camera. Uh... This is what I get for using a wide angle lens that has to be so damn close. Anyway, perhaps the LSA in the seeds needs those other alkaloids in order to pull out its psychedelic effects. Or perhaps we just need more data here. This is all really just me guessing. Maybe NMT really is just more potent than we have been led to believe. I mean, all that we're really going by here is just the findings written in one book. Furthermore, I've also read some reports online of people recently consuming NMT and stating that the experience was very psychedelic. It really does look like we need a lot more factual data to support some of the claims that have been made. We need a lot more research in this area. I can say the same about a lot of drugs or psychedelics that are currently illegal. A lot of them need a lot more research in order to really, well, figure out what the fuck is going on. Moving forward, I'm going to be talking about different DMT containing plants and their alkaloid content. But before I do, I need to make it crystal clear that the act of obtaining any plant material, especially in the USA, for its DMT content is strictly illegal. The plants themselves are not specifically illegal, but thanks to some very ambiguous laws, you could technically still be charged for having them. It's written clearly in the Controlled Substances Act. Unless specifically accepted or unless listed in another schedule, any material, compound, mixture, or preparation which contains any quantity of the following hallucinogenic substances Translation Any natural compound which contains DMT is illegal to possess. One of the primary reasons that a law like this exists is because all throughout nature there are hundreds of plants which contain DMT. Some of these plants, such as Acacia confusa or Phalaris aquatica are invasive species. Not only that, but a lot of these plants that happen to contain DMT also have many other uses. Simply put, it would not be feasible for governments, such as the United States government, to make all DMT containing plants illegal. So instead, places like the United States have these interesting laws which basically allows them to treat legality on a case by case basis. NMT mixtures have become increasingly common since around 2011. This was when the plant that a lot of suppliers used to use, called Mimosa hostilis, became a lot more difficult for a lot of them to obtain. A common alternative that a lot of people went to was a plant called Acacia confusa. But unlike Mimosa hostilis root bark, which contains about 2% total alkaloids by weight, 97% of those being 
NNDMT, 1.43% of Confucius alkaloids are N-methyltryptamine, and only 1.15% NNDMT. But thankfully, due to NMT's low solubility, a lot of the DMT that is extracted from Acacia confusa has been shown to be about 75% DMT and only 25% NMT. However, I was only able to find three solid examples. Two of the examples showed that the average was 75% DMT to 25% NMT. And the third example is simply just myself when I sent my own stuff in to be tested and it came back as being about 75 to 25. Now I also cannot tell you what percent of the DMT that say out there is actually a mix. On ecstasydata.org, there are only six examples of someone sending in pure DMT to be tested, and there's only one example of someone sending in DMT mixed with NMT. My guess, and this really is just a total guess, is that of all the DMT out there, maybe 20 to 30% is actually an NMT mixture. Anyway, that concludes this video. This is actually something that I've been wanting to make for a long time because I realized that not a lot of people out there, simply put, are aware that some of the DMT in circulation actually contains a large amount of NMT. This is also a great example to show you guys that the only way to know for sure that you have what you think you have is to send your drugs away to a laboratory for testing. I mean, you can still reagent test your DMT to make sure it's not something like 5-MeO-DMT, and I've included a link to a reagent kit in the video description, but the reagent test won't tell you, for example, how much NMT is in it. If any of you watching actually do send your DMT to a lab like Energy Control, which is awesome because they can tell you not only just the purity of your product, but exactly what's in it, uh, please email me and let me know what the results are. I would really like to know. I was really frustrated making this video because I only really found three sources. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a big thumbs up, hit that like button. Huge shout out to everyone in this box right here. You guys are my top contributors. If you want to join our Patreon family, I would greatly appreciate it. Channels like this are only made possible thanks to Patreon. If you want to learn more, follow the link that will pop up somewhere here to Patreon. Till next time, See you guys later. No, oh, too much shit behind me.